Hey everybody, I hope everybody's doing well. I'm back from my little break on YouTube. And we're going to start off our, uh, our new series here with a really fairly unique radio. I'm not exactly sure if it's worth a lot, but it's unique. And I'm going to explain what that means. So what we're looking at here is a Detrola radio. Now, you may ask, what model is it? Well, the answer is there is no model. And that's because when Detrola Radio first started making their radios, their original batches of radios, the first couple of models, didn't have a model number. And this radio falls into that category. Now, how do I know that? Well, there's some research that I've done on, um, on the Internet, obviously. And the very first model, or one that's considered to be the first model, is actually a shouldered uh, cathedral. So it's the same radio as this. It's a four-tube TRF. It's got two controls, wood knobs. These are these are all carved wood, and um, it's a shouldered cathedral. So it's got a little bit of a wing here on the top, but it's the same radio inside. So it's really a this is a four tuber um, TRF, obviously, and it has an uh, an 80 rectifier, a 47 output, a 57 detector or second detector, and a 58 RF. So that's what's inside. Um, the Trolla actually made radios for lots and lots of people, other companies. But this particular one has the Detrola logo on it, and that's right here. And we'll give you a close-up of that so you can see what it looks like. Here it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing and we're going to try to figure out uh, what's wrong with it, what it needs, and we're going to try to get it working. The cabinet is really nothing fancy. It's it's probably along the same lines as a Philco 89, I think they were, or the 84 cathedrals. Not very well made. They were probably made to, you know, um, as cheap radios. But I cannot find anything like this on the Internet with, with the full cathedral case. There's just none I can find. I've done loads and loads of research. Now, there's other companies that make radios that look very similar to this with this woodwork and this inlay or this this routed inlay and the two two knobs and a little bit different so they clearly made this model for other companies but they also made one for themselves and I don't find any existence of that now the shouldered one that I told you about although it's an early model is really not rare because a lot of them survived so you can get one of those, and it's, it has, you know, collector's value from a, the aspect that it's an early model. But this one, I don't know. I can't find anything like that looks like this, that matches it with this case. So let's dive in and take a look at, look at it, take a look at the back, what we're going to do. And uh, let's figure out how we're going to get this thing working. There is some work that has to happen on this thing. So let's get set up for that. Okay, looking at the uh, back of the radio you'll see that there's no markings on it except for this RCA label and as we all know RCA bought up all the patents to these things and required everyone to put these on their radios uh, so that they can collect a fee from the patents that's a longer story which we're not going to get into here but here's a close-up of the label that you can see here it's right there and it has a serial number on it and the serial number is B as in boy 28496 now that doesn't help me date it obviously but it, uh, it does, um, does add some significance in the fact that RCA, at this particular stage of the manufacturing process, required them to put that label on. So taking a look at the back, um, this is pretty much what you see here. So um, you, here's your rectifier tube, right here. This is our 47 output tube. This is our 57 second detector. This is our 58 um, RF. You'll see it has a speaker and a coil, it's a very small transformer, and we'll pull this thing out so we can get a better look at it. But you'll see the power cord is cut, and you'll see it has these tube shields, which is interesting. So they didn't have shields that go over the tube themselves, they just put these kind of isolation fences around it, which is interesting. I believe there's a model earlier than this one where they have this across all four tubes. That's what I was able to find. So let's uh, take the chassis out and take a look inside, and then we're going to talk about the game plan, what we're going to do with this thing. Okay, we have the chassis removed, and obviously they don't uh, give you a way to disconnect the speaker, 
So we're not going to cut those wires just yet. We're going to take the speaker out when we get to it. But the speaker remains intact. But here's a good look at the um, at the chassis. So let's uh, let's switch views so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so from this view you can see we have a simple two-gang tuning condenser. We do have a dial light. We have our dial pointer here, which is a piece of, I won't call it plastic because it's 1932, so it's probably not plastic. Again, here's our small transformer. Here's our antenna coil. And we have a magic box here. I'm not sure what's in it. I'll we'll have to take a look at that. And let's take a, take a look at the bottom. Let's see what's going on there. Now this is a very simple set, right? So, so we don't expect there to be um, a lot of things in here. And we want to be really careful that we don't damage that dial pointer. So we're going to turn this this way. Okay. And we're going to put this just like this and we're going to lean it on the cabinet. There we go. Okay, so you should be able to see that at this point. And we'll just do a zoom. Okay, that should be good. All right, so what are we looking at here? Well, we know that we have a pair of eight microfarad caps. Here's one. Here's the other one. We have a coil mounted underneath. And there's something unique about this coil that I want to show you, which I'll show you in a moment. We also have a ballast resistor right here. And we have a bunch, uh, just a handful of wax caps. There's not a lot happening in this radio. We also have a sardine can here, which I assume are more capacitors which we're going to have to look at. They probably have some um, point ones in there or something. That's typically what we have. And then our transformer sticks out from the bottom. But the thing that um, I'm going to have to do some experimentation with is this radio. This component's disconnected. For example, this cap is just kind of hanging in the breeze. We do have some other things that were disconnected. I actually found a resistor rolling around in the case. So what's going to be challenging here is I don't have a schematic, but I do have a schematic, it's Riders 5-1, I believe, that has the 4-tube um, TRF for Detrola. So being that this is a very simple set, it should be pretty easy for me to uh, reverse engineer this thing and get it going. Um, the uh, actual TRF schematic that Riders has, 5-1, I'll actually put a link to it in the description, calls for four microfarad caps here. <clears throat> But these are eight, shouldn't be a big deal. So our plan is, obviously we only have a handful of resistors and caps, so we're going to change all that. We're going to clean up the chassis, and then we're going to restore the cabinet. The cabinet is in really bad shape, and um, we're going to focus on that next. So that's, uh, that's going to be our game plan here, and hopefully we can get this thing working. We're also going to test the tubes, and make sure all that's good. I want to take a moment and show you the knobs because it's rare to have wood knobs. These things are handcrafted obviously somehow. And these are in very, very good shape. Here's the one. And here's the other. And you can see the detail there on these things. I don't know if it's, if it's focusing. Let's take a look on this side. So you can see the detail that's built into these things, which is really good. So uh, this is a nice little unit. And um, Inside this knob here, they have a metal grommet inside. So that's good. So um, that's going to be our plan. And uh, let's take a look at the cabinet now, and let's see what we need to do there, because there's going to be some work required. Okay, looking at this cabinet from the front, it doesn't look so bad. It's got the typical wear marks here, um, where you can, you know, where I've gone, we're going to have to refinish it. And it has this nice little uh, base molding here. But the problem is on this side right here, molding is gone and the cabinet seems to be very loose. So we're going to have to craft a piece of molding that matches to this molding and make sure that it, it's, a, it's a good match and that it completes the unit. I'm going to turn this around a little bit here and you'll also be able to see that we have some loose ends here. So not only do we have to fix that molding, we're going to have to do some repair on the cabinet itself. But that's okay. <clears throat> we'll, we have the ability to do that now, so we're going to do it. Then we're going to try, I'm going to have to consider about refinishing this thing. Now, you know, that's where I'm kind of torn. So is it rare? Is it a rare radio that I shouldn't touch it? I don't know. 
I don't really know the answer. But what I do know is that it was cheaply made. It's not a it's not a you know a handcrafted cabinet. Um, it probably would benefit from a nice uh, refinishing job. And there's a couple of pieces here that I have to fix where the veneer is missing right here and right here. And I don't think I can do it any harm at this point. Um, I just don't want to ruin any value that it may have. But again, can't find anything about it except that it's you know it's an early set with no model number. So um, that's probably what I'm going to do is refinish the cabinet. But we're going to focus on the electronic part of it first. So uh, our plan of attack is going to be to get that chassis out, remove the speaker, clean up the chassis. I do see some signs of rust here, but I believe that will clean up really nicely with some navel jelly and a Scotch Bright pad. And then we're going to put some, um, we're going to polish it with some mother's bag. I know I'm going to be able to get this thing shiny again. And I may remove the coil and just clean the entire top off, remove the transformer. There's not much to it just to get it perfect. Um, and then go from there. So that's going to be our plan. And uh, we'll see what we end up doing with this thing. Um, I'm going to try to do a little bit more research on its, on its existence. But uh, I've done quite a bit already. So that's going to be our plan. So let's uh, let's get to the uh, to the real meat of this thing and start working on it. All right. Before we start digging in a little bit to this thing, one of the things I always like to do when I work on a radio is figure out how well the chassis is going to clean up. So what we're going to do a very small area. We're going to use a Scotch Bright Scotch Bright pad, and we've got a little bit of navel jelly on there. And we're just going to check out an area like right here and see what happens and see how much we're able to get off if we've got some really deep rust we may have to let it sit on there but typically this will do a nice job so I'm just going to do a little scrub in here just in this one area you gotta remember this is from 1932 and it comes out nice that's pretty good. All right, let's rub that off. See what it looks like. Okay, we've got a couple of, of deep spots here that we may have to let it sit. Let's see if I can get you some better light here because this thing's got a little bit of glare. That may be a little bit better. All right, so she cleans up fairly well. Now, the real test for me is how shiny can we get this thing? So we've got this part here cleaned up for the most part. And now we're going to take a little bit of this Mother's Mag and aluminum polish. And we're just going to see how cool we can get that to look. Again, we're just experimenting a little bit. Put a little bit of this on the rag and work it in. What will happen is it'll turn black when it's working. And I'm sorry about the bouncy camera. I have it attached to my desk, my workbench, and it's bouncing along with me. So you'll see on the pad on this uh, <coughs> rag here, it is black, so it's working. Let's see what we have. Should be able to buff this thing out and get a fairly decent shine on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't think so. I don't think you can see it. It's a little bit better there. So there's hope for this chassis. That's my point. <laughs> it's the only thing I wanted to show you. So uh, we now know this thing's going to clean up well. There are some deep rust spots here that I'm going to have to let the navel jelly sit on for a while and soak in. But for the most part, um, we're going to have a nice looking chassis here. All right, let's get to the electronics checkout. Okay, so I'm starting to work on positively identifying this radio, and I, I think I'm onto something. So I want to show you um, how I've done that. So let's start here. So um, the first thing I did is I have a book called the Radio Set Socket Layout Guide. If 
from 1931 to 1935. And I flipped this over to Detrola, because we know it's a Detrola radio. And if you see right here, it says 4 tube RF 1932 TRF. It's got a 58, a 57, a 47, and an 80. And the pilot is 2.5 volts. So that kind of confirms for me that I'm definitely dealing with a 4 tube RF set here. Okay, so we kind of knew that, but we've confirmed it now. So then I went and looked on uh, Beatman's and Riders, and there's no schematic whatsoever for this thing. However, I did find a Gernsback uh, publication. It's Gernsback Official um, Radio Service Manual. And I found the schematic. And it's the Detrola Model 4 Tube Standard. And it's got something that looks very similar to what I have. So what I, the other thing I noticed right away, though, was that the filter capacitors in this diagram are four microfarads. The ones in my radio are eight. But that's not a big deal. So what I started doing then is going underneath my radio and writing down all the resistor codes. These are dog bone resistors, and I'll show you a picture of that in a moment. So I wrote down all the color codes and then translated them to the value. And then I did a basically a match for match comparison because there is a parts list here, which is thank I'm really thankful for that. So I have a parts list and everything lines up pretty well. So what I'm um, going to do here, being that I had to do a little bit of investigative work, is I'm actually going to create a, uh, a picture of the underside of the radio and I'm going to identify the components. I'm also going to put the values in those components. And I'm going to put it up on the antique radio forum in case anybody else tries to restore one of these things because there's not much on the internet about this thing. So I'm going to do that just to help um, other folks. I also um, found a DVD collection or a CD collection of all the Gernsback manuals, which um, one of their claims is that they have radios, schematics that uh, Riders and Beatman do not have, and that's obviously true with this one. So I'll get that DVD, and I'll make that available to anybody that wants it as well. Just let me know. I probably won't have it for, for a week or so. So we now know what radio we have. And we now know we have a schematic that we could use. It's primitive. It's a primitive schematic, but it's, you know, 1932. So um, what I'm going to do now is show you a picture of the underside of the uh, radio and show you all the components. So let's do that now. Okay. So we have our, uh, our picture on the screen, and you could see a couple of things here. You can see that we've got all the components identified underneath. There's not a lot of them. You'll notice, also notice that um, we have a, a sardine can there. You, you see, I have it marked sardine can, um, and it's got four times um, four four capacitors in there are point ones. So I've got that identified. I've got all the um, electrolytics identified, obviously, all the resistors identified. Everything is there, and. The, um, the component that you see that's uh, attached or underneath the orange electrolytic cap. Remember I told you I didn't know what that was? Well, I think I know what it is now. I think it's our output transformer. The output transformer is um, mounted in a can on the top side of the radio. And I was able to trace that back, obviously, because when you look at when you look at whatever, what's connected to that, if you look at the diagram, you'll see there's a, a green dog bone. And you've got the orange um, electrolytic cap there. And you've got a blue dog bone. And you have a, a wire, round, wire wound resistor, which is about 300 ohms. And if you look at the schematic, which we'll put on the screen right now for a moment, and here it is. Okay, let's remove that. You'll notice that everything kind of ties back to that. That's definitely going to be our um, our output transformer. So um, so now we know what that is. The other thing that I did to figure this out was I I measured the field coil. So the field coil on this thing is on the schematic is um, supposed to be uh, 2,500 ohms, and that's exactly what mine is. So now I know I definitely have a model four, uh, four tube um, standard um, TRF set from Detrola. And I now can start working on this thing because I do have a bunch of disconnected wires. Matter of fact, let me show you that now. Okay, so here's our radio. I've taken the dial off because I don't want it to get damaged. And um, 
here's what I'm talking about with broken wire. So first of all, this capacitor is flapping in the breeze. It's attached to the output transformer. This is actually C4 on the schematic right here. But I've got this wire here, not connected to anything. I have a wire here that comes off the output transformer that's just kind of hanging around right here. It's wrapped around a component. I'm not sure why. I'm going to need to track that back. And um, I think everything is good. It's just those two things that are just kind of flapping in the breeze here. Um, my initial thought was this was probably just a, 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 a something to get rid of hum, or maybe it's a gimmick, but I don't know about that. I think there's a problem with this. We're going to need to figure out what this wire is. So um, we do have some pretty oddball components in this thing. Like, for example, this capacitor right here. It's an unusual one. And right here, we have an unusual one as well. So we're going to have to take a look at those. I'm sure they're all bad. Uh, after all these years and you know this thing's got holes in it so I'm sure moisture's gotten in there so our next step is let's start uh, replacing the components there's only a handful so it shouldn't take me long and then we're going to trace back and see where these wires go okay so that's going to be our next step but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up the schematic and the reason why I want to clean it up I'll show you this quickly is there's really no connector points on this thing right that's kind of what I'm used to so, you know, here's a connector point, here, here. They don't really show you where everything connects together. So we're going to take some time and just make sure that when I follow this thing up, because I need this for the wires, that we, um, we take care of it. So that's what we're going to do. And um, then we're going to start to get this thing ready to test. So uh, that's good. So um, that's going to be the introduction to our, to our project. This will be, probably be a... a three or four part series. First we'll get the radio working, then we'll work on the cabinet. So that's our, uh, that's our, that's our, um, our project. So um, again, when I get the Gernsback manuals, if anybody's interested in those, let me know. We'll figure out a way to make that happen. And um, I think we're good. So uh, that concludes episode one for this, uh, for this Detrola four tube standard TRF radio. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care.